So you can kind of think about almost, hey, where's the destination I want to lead somebody to? Um, what type of you know information or questions would I ask a normal person that I'm talking to in an interaction to kind of get there um, or to gauge how interested they are? And then how can I break that down inside my messenger sequence and, and keep it conversational, keep it short, use GIFs, um, you know, probably a, le a little less, um, you know, professional than you maybe are in your emails, but every business is different. You know what I mean? So it, I think the big thing is think about who you're communicating with and how would they want you to speak to them in a face-to-face -face interaction and then keep that language um, very similar to that. Fire up your mobile device, strap on your earbuds, and prepare for another exciting episode of the Agents of Change podcast featuring Rich Brooks. Welcome to another episode of the Agents of Change podcast. I'm your host, Rich Brooks. This is my show. We're up to episode 253, and as always, we're powered by Flight New Media. One of the biggest opportunities in digital marketing and social media these days, at least in my opinion are chatbots. Maybe you've heard of them, maybe you've seen them on Facebook or another platform, I'm not sure. But in my opinion, the time to jump on chatbots for your business is now. Now, while they're still novel. Now, while your competitor is wondering if they're worthwhile. Now, before everybody tires of them. That's right. I mean, something new comes along, it's exciting, people are interested, uh, it breaks through the clutter, and then we get used to it and it's less interesting than it used to be. Take email marketing. Uh, so to learn more about chatbots, I called up Ethan Sigmund, founder of Opesta, one of the best FB messenger bot builders out there, to ask him to come on the show and, and just talk to us a little bit more about these chatbots. But before we get to that, I want to remind you that time is running out to get your best deal on tickets for the 7th Annual Agents of Change Digital Marketing Conference. This takes place here in Portland, Maine, as well as online. So we'd love to have you here in Portland, but if you can't make it, you can certainly check out the entire conference from the comfort of your own home or workplace. We're going to have 15 sessions, three keynotes, and four in-depth, hands-on, limited space workshops over the course of two days. Speakers like Joel Kahn, Tamson Webster, Jen Herman, Josh Stanton, Nancy Harhut, and of course me. I mean, after all... It's my conference, and that's one of the benefits of putting on a conference is you get at least one gig a year. So what else? We're going to be covering topics like video, live video, advanced Facebook advertising, geofencing, Pinterest marketing, selling on Amazon, and a whole lot more. We've even got an entire track dedicated for local businesses just like yours. Tickets start at $349 for the physical pass, but for right now, you can get them for just $199. That's a savings of $150, bucks, just in case you're not so good at math. Or if you can't make it to Portland, take advantage of that virtual pass. Normally, it's $199, but right now, it's only $99. Bucks. That's half off, $100 savings. But act quickly, because these prices are going up at the end of June. Seriously. So you want to go over to theagentsofchange.com. Go check it out. Check out the website. Check out the agenda. Check out the videos from previous years, the photos. You're going to see what an amazing event it is. And then buy your ticket before the prices go up. Okay. Let's go check out this week's interview with Ethan Sigmund. He's the founder of Opesta, a Facebook Messenger marketing automation software. Prior to founding Opesta, he built a reputation for himself as a leading Facebook ads expert, running ads for clients like John Lee Dumas, Sumo.com, Andrew Warner, Athletic Greens, Vivant, and many more. He has generated tens of millions in sales through Facebook and founded multiple SaaS companies. Now he is laser focused on helping businesses and entrepreneurs leverage the Facebook Messenger platform to generate leads, sales, and manage customer support by providing them with the software to do it. I'm very happy to welcome Ethan Sigmund. Hey, Rich. Good to be here with you. This is going to be fun. We're, this is, the, I think, the first time we've ever really talked about chatbots on the show. And uh, so before we jump into the hows and whys, just can you give us a brief explanation? What is a chatbot? Yeah, absolutely. So 
Um, a little over a year and a half ago, uh, Facebook opened up their API to let businesses essentially build um, chatbots. And the way they structured it is um, they gave some possibilities that um, are very similar to things that people do with email um, right now, where you can almost build like a list of subscribers and, and send them messages and things like that. And so essentially a chat bot is just, um, you know, a marketing channel inside the Facebook Messenger where you can build a list of subscribers and set up, you know, automated interactions for them um, or, you know, send one off messages, whatever's best for your business. So does this live just inside Facebook or is this just one flavor of chatbots? Um, so in the in the broad sense of the word chatbot, um, it, there's chatbots for tons of different platforms. Um, so, you know, if somebody if you're talking to somebody specifically just about chatbots, um, it, it may be good to ask them, uh, you know, what platform they're building on. Some people build bots for Slack or you know, other apps like Discord or even, you know, I think Skype is opening up an API soon. So um, there can be other platforms. Um, we and I primarily deal uh, with just the Facebook Messenger. Okay. So this is a fairly new technology. How did mm -hmm. you find yourself here? You know, I, I found myself here because, you know, as you mentioned in, in my intro, I kind of started out running ads for others as an agency. And so I built up this uh, big kind of Facebook ads agency. And, and essentially, I, I did that out of necessity when I was building my first SaaS company originally because I needed some cash flow and I needed something to, to fund, you know, my development, things like that. And, and I was pretty good at ads. And so that kind of just grew and grew and grew in, into this big agency. And, and something that we started to see, um, you know, about a year ago is that, you know, people were, were doing a lot more with uh, Facebook Messenger and with these chatbots. And primarily on our end, since we ran specifically, you know, Facebook ad campaigns, Facebook introduced um, new ad campaigns called Send a Messenger campaigns. Um, and you may have seen these in your newsfeed or, or whatnot. Instead of when you see an ad, instead of having, you know, a button that takes you to a different website, um, when you click the button, it opens up a Messenger chat. Um, window and it sends you just a basic introduction kind of message. Um, and so whenever Facebook releases a new kind of ad type or things like that, we like to try and get on it as soon as we can because costs are usually really, really cheap um, for those ads and that usually translates to being able to get really good returns. And so we jumped on that for some of our clients and, and for ourselves. Um, I mean, at that point, my, my other SaaS company was was running and we're running a lot of ad spend to it to, to get new clients. Um, and that's where we really first got started with, I guess, chatbots. And we were doing all custom development around it then. Uh, you kind of had to know API and know how to code and, and build your own kind of stuff. And now it sounds like the tools have become a lot simpler to use? Or have yeah, there just yeah. been companies like Opesta that have jumped up and basically created an interface? How, how does that work? Yeah, exactly. So there's been, you know, um, SaaS companies that have come up and kind of productized and, like you said, basically created an interface um, that allow you to not have to know how to code to build out these interactions, almost similar to like how there's drag and drop website builders. Um, all those drag and drop website builders are doing on the back end is inserting, you know, predefined snippets of HTML and CSS and things like that, um, you know we and others have have built software that that does the coding on the back end for you and is kind of all a visual thing so you don't have to as a business owner or somebody who wants to try out chatbots have to be a developer you can just you know know how to know exactly what you want to say and when you want to say it and and then just draw that out visually all right so you you mentioned the word interaction a couple times so if i understand it correctly if i'm building a chatbot what i'm really doing is setting up some pre-recorded messages perhaps in a decision tree, perhaps just in a, in a sequential line to engage a prospect. Is that accurate? Yeah, yeah, that's the, that's the most uh, you, common way of use right now and, and the easiest way to get started, definitely. Okay, so what are some, so how do we break into somebody's messenger with, with a bot? Like how exactly does that process start? 
Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, the, the easiest thing to compare it to um, for a frame of reference, since most, you know, of your listeners and just people in general understand it is, you know, email marketing. So if I have an email list, I'm a business owner, you know, I'm usually trying to get people on that email list. And I do that by providing them with opportunities to opt in. Maybe sometimes I offer them lead magnets or, you know, um, ethical bribes, whatever you want to call them to, you know, say, hey, get 5% off your next order when you opt into our email list, whatever it might be. And when you opt in, there's usually a form where you enter your name, email address, and you, you click a submit button. We're all pretty familiar with that. Um, so what Facebook has done, it's a little bit different because it is their platform and they want to make sure that um, people are actually opting in for interaction. So they've basically created a handful of ways that people can opt in. And, and they call these um, basically, uh, they call them triggers. Um, and what they do is they allow you to say, hey, yes, I want to receive messages from this, this bot or this page. So the easiest and most common way is if you just message somebody's Facebook page and if they have, you know, um, kind of a bot software set up, you will become a subscriber. Um, and then it's up to them if they've maybe set up keyword triggers or things like that based off of things in your message, they may be able to trigger automated messages back to you. Um, some of the other most common ways are is they, Facebook has created these little buttons that are called send to messenger buttons that you can embed on any web page, on any pop-up, things like that. When somebody clicks on a send to messenger button, it'll pop up with a little pop-up saying, hey, or do you wanna confirm that you wanna communicate with this bot? They can say yes and it will. Um, another small one is like, a, they call it a, a checkbox plugin. And it's basically a little checkbox that you could add to any form, say that email form that you have. And if somebody clicks the checkbox, um, when they submit the button, they'll also, you know, be prompted and subscribed to Messenger. Um, so there's a handful of ways they have, you know, picture codes, almost similar to a Snapchat code that if you have your phone and you open up Messenger, you can take a picture of it and it'll subscribe you to the bot. Um, and then they also have what they call reference URLs um, that will bring you into a bot. And then if you click a button that says get started, you'll be subscribed and can interact. So those are kind of the main ways right now that somebody can subscribe to a Facebook bot or interact with it. Okay, and so we can put those out there. How about targeting people through advertisements? I mean, you you have a lot of experience with Facebook ads. Um, is this one of the new outcomes or is this how you got into it? Instead of sending people to an opt-in page or to a lead magnet, instead we're sending them to a chatbot and asking them to subscribe to this chatbot? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, um, you know, when I really first saw the power that these chatbots would have, um, it was when we tested them for the first time in a campaign with uh, John Lee Dumas. So he was promoting a book of his um, and we decided, hey, let's see if we can, can use this in an ad and really, you know, see if it's cheaper on the cost per acquisition that we're getting from pushing somebody straight to the sales page. Um, and so what we did is we created an ad and on the ad, we basically said, hey, comment below and we'll send you a, a message with, you know, a, a $15 off coupon, I believe it was. Um, and so when somebody commented on the ad, we had set up, you know, a bot that that was a trigger for it. And it sent somebody a message. Um, if they replied to that message, that was kind of like the double opt in confirmation. Um, and when they did, we were able to send them that coupon. Um, and we saw that that ad outperformed all the other ads as far as a cost per acquisition that we had ran before by about like 20 percent um, and we just pumped as much budget in it as we could and it, it really crushed it for us and so that was when my eyes kind of got open to the possibility of chatbots and and really what what brought me into using them so you mentioned John Lee Dumas, and obviously that's a very particular type of business. What are some of the things that you've seen other small businesses and marketers, maybe quote unquote real world businesses, do with chatbots? Yeah, you know, an another really good one is um, they'll do kind of giveaway style campaigns. Um, so for example, there is a car wash business. Um, they do basically it's not like a brick and mortar location, but a, a come to you auto detailing type deal 
um, where it's kind of a family family business, and you know, for a hundred bucks, they come and you know, wash and detail your car while you're at work, and it's in the parking lot or or at your house or wherever. Um, and so, I mean, that's about as small business as you can get. Um, you know, real world example. One of the things that they did is they created a post on Facebook um, that basically said, "Hey, we're giving away a, a free detailing." Um, here are the rules to enter. All you have to do is comment on this post um, and then you know share it with a friend and reply to the message that we send you um, so that we can notify you if you win. And so they put that post up and then they just simply boosted that post. They weren't Facebook ad experts or anything like that. They just boosted the post in their area for you know a few hundred bucks. Um, and then they had built the chat bot on the back end so that when somebody commented on the post, it sent them a message that said, hey, I just want to confirm that you're entering this giveaway. Reply here and you'll be fully entered. Um, once they replied, they became a subscriber. Um, and then what happened was after a week, they picked a winner. All right. And this is kind of where the magic comes in. Um, they picked a winner and they messaged everybody who had entered. They got, I think, like four or five hundred entries. Um, and the winner got, you know, the free car wash and then they set it up so that their chat bot went ahead and messaged everybody an hour later and said, Hey, we wish everybody could have won. Obviously we can only pick one winner. So what we want to do is we want to give you, uh, basically a, uh, you know, a second place reward type deal. And here's $20 off of free detailing. It's good for the next 30 days. Um, and what that did then was that generated, I think, close to, to 25 um, set car wash appointments from people that just got that coupon. Um, and they were able to generate, uh, you know, a good source of revenue from that, never used chatbots before, and just kind of did a giveaway um, as the incentive to get people on their list and then offered them a, a discount if they didn't win. Now, Ethan, you've commented a few times that there's a similarity between chatbots and email marketing, and I'm a huge email marketing fan. Are there limits in terms of your ability to communicate pe with people through chatbots on Facebook? Like with email marketing, once they're on my list, until they unsubscribe, I can email them as many times as I want. Are there other types of limitations on my ability to communicate with people through my chatbots once they've subscribed? Yeah, absolutely. So there, there are some limitations around um, how you should be messaging people. Um, they can unsubscribe just like they can on an email list, and so you want to make sure that um, you're honoring those unsubscribes. And most, you know, software if you're using it will will be set up to just like your email software automatically kind of honors that and, and stops sending to people that have unsubscribed. But beyond that, Facebook doesn't want um, messenger marketing to turn into you know this spammy direct marketing tool where you're just kind of blasting out every new sale that happens to everybody that subscribes. And so they do have some rules that they set up and, and limitations that um, they want you to follow for best practices. And the whole goal behind them is just simply to try and make Messenger more conversational. Because it is similar to email in the sense that you can build a list and you can kind of send messages to these people. But it is different in the sense that, you know, you can it's not unusual to send a 300 word email but if i sent you a 300 word message on facebook messenger you would look at that and be like i'm i'm never going to read that that's that's ridiculous it's way too long um and so they want to make it more conversational almost like you talk to your friends so some of the limitations that they set up is they say all right once somebody subscribes or interacts with you you have a 24 hour window where you can send them any promotional messages you want um, so you can send them, hey, we have this sale going on. Hey, we have this awesome product. Go buy it now. You can be as straightforward and direct as you want. After that 24-hour window, um, you have to send a value-based message. You cannot send a straight marketing message to somebody. Um, but as soon as they interact with you again, you can send messaging material. So a lot of people think, oh, man, that's that stinks, I wanna build this list, but then I can't even use it to market my product. But that's not true, all you have to do is, is make sure you're engaging with people first. And so this could be as simple as asking somebody a question and getting them to respond. Once they've responded, they've opened that 24 window, hour window back up. 
um, offering them something, you know, free. And when they click on a, a quick reply, they've engaged with you, and then you can, you know, follow that up with with marketing. Um, it's the goal behind it is to make it more conversational, to make you kind of think about how to build better relationships with your subscribers rather than um, just trying to to push uh, product at them. Who's deciding whether or not a chatbot message is value based or promotional? Because I'm just thinking about that that car wash company and I thought it was a brilliant idea what they did but if they waited I'm sure it was over 24 hours and then they sent out something that said hey listen you didn't win but here's a discount to where you can uh, get it you know to get a discounted rate that seems pretty promotional I mean somebody might argue that there's value there but it feels more promotional than valuable there how did they get around that or am I misunderstanding it no no you're you're absolutely right the it's it's all at discretion, to be honest. So Facebook has some documents where they they list out, hey, this is kind of what we define as a, a non-promotional message, a value kind of based message. These are examples of things that work. Um, here are examples of things that we deem promotional based messages. Um, and then, you know, they kind of just similar to the way that they review ads and things, they'll uh, you know, occasionally review messages that are being sent out by your page, and if they are getting high complaints, that you know that puts the review under a little bit more um, scrutiny. Uh, but it's kind of at their discretion. So, give me some examples then of something that. So, of course, I'm hearing the story about the the car wash, and I'm thinking about my own conference coming up, and the fact maybe I'd want to build my chatbot subscriber list by offering a free a free virtual pass. So mm -hmm. the virtual pass, same model that they just used. So let's say that I do all that. What kind of valuable content could I share with people on a regular basis then to engage with them? Like what seems to be working? You know, feel free to give me anything like, should I be worried about length? I think you mentioned that. Should I be, mm -hmm. how do I, should my language be more casual than it might be in an email because this is chat? Should I be using funny GIFs? What have you seen? Yeah. Work? Yeah, absolutely. So um, a few things. So with the conference and with your messaging, something nice is um, you can send transactional style messages at any point. And so what I mean by that is if somebody purchased something and they requested that they wanted receipts or shipping information or something through the messenger, that's fine. Or if somebody registers for your conference and they request that they want reminders through messenger, that's fine too. And so one of the things, you know, in the most basic form that you could do um, through Messenger for the conference is essentially say, hey, you get a digital pass, and then if you want me to remind you inside of Messenger as well, you know, when these are going live or when you can watch them, things like that, um, let me know. And then you could send those reminder messages at any point. So, hey, you know, the digital pass is available now, or we just went, I don't know if it's going to be like a live stream. If it's a live stream, hey, you know, this speaker's on right now, tune in, so on and so forth. Um, so that's one one kind of basic point that I would do. Um, and then to speak to your kind of your other questions, yeah, you do want to keep them a lot shorter. You want to ask questions. Um, one of the cool things with um, kind of Facebook Messenger and Messenger bots is you can use things like uh, quick replies is what Facebook calls them. Um, and what they do is essentially you can you can enter almost predefined responses. So if you ask a yes no question, you can enter enter in a yes and no quick reply, and then all the user has to do is click yes or no, and and it kind of takes them on that branch, that type of, of thing. And so you can kind of think about almost, hey, where's the destination I want to lead somebody to? Um, what type of you know information or questions would I ask a normal person that I'm talking to in an interaction to kind of get there? Um, or to gauge how interested they are. And then how can I break that down inside my messenger sequence and, and keep it conversational, keep it short, use GIFs, um, you know, probably a, le a little less, um, you know, professional than you maybe are in your emails, but every business is different, you know what I mean? So it, I think the big thing is think about who you're communicating with and how would they want you to speak to them in a face-to-face -face interaction and then keep that language um, very similar to that. Okay. So when I was at a social media marketing world this past February, March, I saw a few different presentations about chatbots. And one of the presentations I saw was kind of extolling the power of chatbots over email, saying that 
that chatbots were a better communication tool. Just wondering if you agree with that or what your thoughts are on that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's it's funny that you bring that up because you know one of the reasons we created um, a lot of our own chatbots and didn't kind of use some of the pre-built um, you know software out there that it ended up coming out um, to create our experiences is because all the the platforms out there previously um, that we could find took that approach that you just kind of mentioned. Hey. Uh, messengers way better than email kind of choose one or the other approach um, which is not what we wanted to do in our marketing um, I'm a big kind of direct marketing guy and you know like I said we run a lot of Facebook ads we run a lot of email and there's one thing that I know for certain and that's the more channels that you can target your prospect on or the more channels they see you on the more likely they are to convert into customers and so I wanted to be able to email somebody and send them a message on Messenger so that I knew for sure that they were going to see one or the other or at least increase my chances of that. Um, and so, you know, my whole approach is, hey, don't replace your email marketing with Messenger marketing. Don't only do Messenger marketing. What, what I say and, and what we try and kind of teach everybody that we talk to about messenger marketing is you can set these up in conjunction and you can make it so that they complement each other. And so your messenger list builds your email list and so your email list builds your messenger list. Um, and then that gives you, you know, a lot more interaction with the same people, which then allows you to just be in front of them constantly, which is going to lead to, you know, a lot more sales and, and actual revenue, which is what most businesses care about. Once you sit down uh, and you, because there, there's Opesta, there are other platforms out there to help us build these chatbots. Like as a small business owner, I'm always concerned about how much time I'm going to have to invest in a new technology or a new solution. How long does it take you to actually set up a chatbot? And then is it once you're done, you're done, or are you constantly tweaking and evolving it? Yeah, so I mean, I, I guess it, it all depends on what you're trying to set up, right? Uh, it's 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 very hard to say oh, it'll take five minutes. Uh, but if you're just trying to set up something basic where, hey, I want people to be able to opt in um, and become a messenger subscriber, and then I want to send them a you know a thank you message with uh, a free you know uh, ebook or you know coupon or something very simple like that, um, you could set something like that up in in five to ten minutes. Um, if you're getting a little bit more advanced, where just like you can with email marketing automation, you know, hey, when somebody does this, I want this to happen, and then if they don't do this, I want this to happen, and then if, you know, you've seen some of these email marketing campaigns that look like uh, <laughs> some sort of crazy polygon that has a million sides to it, um, you can do the same thing with Messenger, and, and obviously those take hours and hours to build out, um, but it's possible. So um, what we've tried to do is kind of build out templates to get people started um, and give them frameworks so that they can kind of at least have something to go off of and, and save themselves some time. Um, and then you can modify or, or build things yourself. Um, and that has been a lot, really helpful for a lot of small businesses that we know that are on the platform. Um, but yeah, it really just depends on how advanced you want to get with it. Now, this are these chatbots are they attached to our facebook pages and if they are could we have a chatbot that's attached to a personal profile or to a group or is it strictly pages right now yeah so they are actually attached to to facebook business pages and that's all they can be attached to right now um so you can't attach it to your personal profile or to groups unfortunately um, I know a lot of people will build business pages for themselves um, if they're kind of like a public figure or, or things like that. Um, you would be able to attach it to that, but uh, you can't attach it to your personal Facebook pages. Okay. So it seems to me that the way to go is uh, you have your business page on Facebook, you create it, you know, your first chat bot or possibly your first few chat bots, and then you need to trigger... Uh, set up these triggers so that people can basically opt in. Is there anything more when you're teaching people about chatbots that they should keep in mind with the whole process of how to get started and how to build a successful chatbot? Yeah, absolutely. I would say, you know, the biggest thing that I tell people right now um, that I don't think 
people understand because they it's a little different than other channels is even if you don't think you're going to use your you know a chat bot or build or any triggers or set anything up you know today or even in a year but you think eventually it would be something that you want to use in your business connect a page and get started because the reason I say that is, you know, like I said, one of the ways that somebody becomes a subscriber is if they message your page, they'll subscribe. Um, but that only occurs if you have a chat bot, you know, software set up already, or you've kind of connected your page to the API using, you know, code, custom code yourself. So what can happen is let's say, you know, for example, you rich, you're thinking about doing stuff for your conference, but you're not sure. You can come into, you know, Pesto or any other software, at least connect your business page and then never touch it. It'll literally take you 10 seconds. You'll log in, create an account, connect your page, never touch it. And then what could happen is you could come back in six months later and realize, oh, my gosh, I have 100 subscribers because people will message your page and just ask you questions or tell you they liked the, you know, the episode or anything like that. You're not sending out any automated responses or any automated replies because you haven't set that up with your chatbot, but you have been able to collect subscribers. Um, and now if you didn't link, you know, a software, you would be out those 100 subscribers because it can't just backdate and collect people who have messaged you in the past. Um, so my biggest advice to people is even if you're on the fence, even if you don't know you're going to use them, but you think you might go and connect to software and just, just set it up so that you're able to at least capture subscribers. Good advice. This has been great. Um, I definitely am looking forward to it. I, I told you before, I'm planning on jumping in uh, possibly right after this interview, start playing around with it. Uh, for people who are interested uh, to learn more, learn more about you, your company, chatbots in general, where can we send them? Yeah, absolutely. You know, the, the best thing I would say is head on over to opesta.com forward slash webinar um, and go ahead and, and kind of opt into that webinar there. We we run, we run one quite frequently and, and basically what we do is we come in, we show you examples, use cases, you know, we talked about the car wash, but beyond that we show you exactly how they've, what triggers people have set up, what messages they're sending out. Um, and how to do it inside the software so you have at least some knowledge and baseline. Since this is something so new, um, a lot of people are interested in it but just don't know where to get started. Um, and, and I would say that's the best place for you to get a lot of base information and a good base understanding about you know, messenger marketing and, and chatbots. Yeah, and you know, I caught a uh, recording of a webinar that you put on with John Lee Dumas, and you really did do a great job of going through in, in a lot more detail than we talked about today, but different case studies and how to get things set up and, you know, interactions on your website. And if you do want to dig deeper, I definitely would recommend going out and checking that resource off. Uh, Ethan, this has been great. Yeah. Appreciate the time and your expertise today. Absolutely, Rich. I really enjoyed being here. Thank you for having me. That was a lot of information, a lot of great information, and in case you felt like you missed something or you wanted to go back and listen to it but you don't have the time right now, or you wish you had taken notes, don't worry about it. Because like every episode we do here on the Agents of Change podcast, we have a full transcript available at the website along with all of the links that Ethan shared with us. So just head on over to theagentsofchange.com slash 253. You'll find everything you need there. And while you're there, you're going to see the subscribe button. So if you haven't subscribed yet to the Agents of Change podcast, maybe it's because you didn't know it was free. But it is. It's absolutely free. And all you need to do is click on one of those links, either for iTunes or Stitcher, or maybe you just want to go over to Spotify and, and, and set it up there. So whatever you want to do, find it on your favorite podcasting app. I don't care. Uh, it just makes your life easier. So go ahead and take care of that. And while you're there, don't forget to grab your heavily discounted tickets to the 7th Annual Agents of Change Conference right here in Portland, Maine and online. That's all the content we have for this week. Talk to you again in 7. It looks like we reached the end of another episode of the Agents of Change podcast, and another mystery has been solved. But for how long? And what new challenges will appear on the horizon? Join us next time for more digital marketing adventures.